everybody. Brad Nessler here, and with me as always, Kirk Herbstreit and Lee Corso. Mother Nature has served up perfect weather for today's game between the Virginia Cavaliers and the Michigan Wolverines. Well, folks, we're excited to bring you what appears to be another great gridiron matchup. Here come the Wolverines. The Cavaliers look ready to come in here and get the upset. Kirk, how do you think this one will play out? Michigan has your prototypical safety, and he'll show the nation why in this one. You'll see him covering receivers downfield, making plays behind the line of scrimmage. The guy's everywhere, and he's the reason I'm picking them to win this game. I've been quiet about this, but I think it's finally time for my pick. Michigan is going to manhandle. Both teams have sent their special teams onto the field, and we're ready for the opening kickoff. Kicks off. Hirsch fields it at the 18. Now we'll get to see how this quarterback can do today as he comes out onto the field for the first time. Well, if you haven't heard about him before, then now is the time to know this cornerback's name. He's a great player, and he'll be asked to shut down the opposing team's number one receiver. He has his hands full today, though. He'll be covering a very good receiver. Kirk, it doesn't matter. This kid is fast. He's smart, and he loves to play the game. I don't see the offense going his way. We'll keep an eye on this matchup, that's for sure. They line up at the 41. It's second and four to go. Brady is back in the gun, back to pass. Darts it to the right. Complete, what a catch. Good pickup by the receiver. Yeah, this kid loves to play. He wants the ball every time they pull it up. They line up at the 46. It's first down. The Wolverine line up with five receivers. Tosses short. That's incomplete. Wow. You talk about missing an open man. The defense got real lucky there. Yeah, they did. Someone either blew an assignment or got beat because that guy was wide open. Second and 10. Brady lines up with five wide out. Brady options out. Ball's loose. Defense says they've got it. And they do. He really wanted that ball, didn't he, Kirk? Man, you can't teach hustle like that. The linebacker was determined to get the ball there, and he did. They'll start this drive at midfield. The Cavalier are lining up with three receivers. Brooks, back to pass. He passes it, and he's tackled at the 41-yard line. Nice job by the quarterback to hit the tight end for a decent game. Yeah, this guy's not going to burn too many guys deep, but he's definitely a good possession guy who you can rely on. First down, 10 yards to go. Ball on the 41. Warren, the lone back. And he's going to be sacked. up at the 43. Second down, about 12 yards to go. The Cavs come out showing three wide. Brooks goes with a play fake, and he brings it down. Nice pickup as they connect on the pass play. Well, they look to be in sync right now. They're both reading the defense properly, and the result is a nice game. Third, and Third down and a yard. Ball on the 32. Brings him down at the 32. And the tailback's going nowhere on that counter. Fourth down. And the kicker is on to try this one from 49. This will make it a field goal game. The kick is up. It's blocked. And this should give the offense some momentum now going into this drive. Great special teams plays always create momentum, Brad. And that's just what this team can use. Second it's second down. 
Virginia lines up with three receivers. Warren takes a handoff. Yarno with a takedown at the 39. Brad Nessler joined in the booth by Lee Corso and Kirk Herbstreet. Mother Nature has served up perfect weather for today's game between the West Virginia Mountaineers and the Volunteers of Tennessee. Well, folks, we're excited to bring you what appears to be another great gridiron matchup. Here come the Volunteers. The Volunteers look ready to come in here and get the upset. Kirk, how do you think this one will play out? West Virginia has one of their best players lining up in their backfield. Lee, expect a huge game from him running the football and maybe even catching a few passes. He's a tremendous athlete, and they'll use him as much as they can. I like it, Kirk. That's an excellent pick. West Virginia will win this Tennessee is lined up for the opening kickoff. So here we go. Decent kick. Smith takes it at the eight. Now we'll get to see how this quarterback can do today as he comes out onto the field for the first time. One of the reasons I've been looking forward to this game is to see this safety play. Watching him live is probably much better than watching him on TV, don't you think, guys? This kid is a great defensive back. He's a vicious hitter. He's a great leader. He's good in pass defense. And when it all comes down to it, he does it all. I think this guy's going to have a big game today. I think we'll see at least one interception from him today. You heard it from Kirk Herbstreit. I like the position. And they'll look to capitalize on the good field position here. Three wideouts here. Makes a move. He's taken down at the 29. Lewis gets about a yard on the play. So that'll make it second down. From the 29-yard line, second and nine. Tennessee comes to the line, only one man in the backfield. The senior makes the catch. Penalty marker down in the backfield. Might be a holding call. He did get to him right there. The officials have gotten really serious about hits like this. I think it's good for the game that they're doing such a good job of protecting the quarterbacks. Kirk, that was well put. Lewis lines up in the deep back, eye formation. To the end zone! And he's got it for the touchdown. The quarterback mixed things up a bit and found the big guy for the score. This kid is worth it. West Virginia up by seven and looking at first and goal. The Mountaineers set up in the gun. Counter play. Touchdown, West Virginia. Guys, what a big time score right there. Let me tell you why that was so important. That puts them up by two scores with not much time left at all. And all they have to do now is not give up any... I'm Brad Nessler, joined by the coach, Lee Corso, and the quarterback, Kirk Herbstreet. The players will have to battle cold temperatures in the game tonight between the Penn State Nittany Lions and the Clemson Tigers. Well, folks, we're excited to bring you what appears to be another great gridiron matchup. And here come the Tigers. The Nittany Lions expect big things from their guys today. Who do you have winning this one, Kirk? Penn State has outstanding leadership on defense, and it all starts with this young man. He gets his teammates lined up and ready to play every down. And, Coach, he's got them ready to go for this one. I know everyone has been waiting. It's time for my pick. 
I'm picking the nip needle. Clemson is kicking off first, and we're ready to get this game underway. He sends it off. Royster fields it at the seven. So now we'll get to see the offense come out of the field for their first drive of this game. This is a pretty good quarterback coming out of the field right now, but this safety wants to make sure that he doesn't have a good day out there. You know what? I'm going to go out on the limb here and predict an interception today by this safety. Wow, I like that prediction, Kirk. But I don't see the quarterback throwing the ball his way too often today. So we'll see what he can do. From their own 25-yard line, it's second and 10. Penn State comes out in the shotgun, lets it fly, and it's picked off. That interception will be credited to the linebacker. Way to come down with that football. That was not an easy play to make. Well, that's just great hands for a linebacker. He looks pretty good out there catching the football. And they'll look to capitalize on the good field position here. Four wide receivers in the formation. Throws it. Caught. Knocked out of bounds at the 39. They lose three yards there. It's second down now and 13 to go. Ball on the 39. Three wide outs here. Watson back to throw. He'll dump it short. And this one falls incomplete. Clark was the intended target. That'll make it third down. They line up at the 39. Third down. The offense lines up with three wide receivers. He steps up, looking, lets it fly. Got him. And he's all the way down to the nine yard line. The receiver found a hole in the zone and turned it into a first down. No matter what type of defensive coverage you have, there are always going to be holes. The best thing you can do is make those holes small so the quarterback can't get the ball in there. They're inside the 20. The Tigers come out in the ace formation. He steps up. He's under pressure. They bring him down. They line up at the 13. We've got second and goal. Clemson lines up with three receivers. And there's a fumble. Defense says they've got... It's third down at 10. The Tigers line up with three wide. Steps up. Watson lets it go. Batted ball. Now that's the way to get in there and break up a pass. And more importantly, Coach, brings up a fourth down situation. They line up to punt this one away. Number 13 is waiting for the snap. Punts the ball away. Taylor fields it to 44. The offense heads out onto the field. In their last series, they opted to try and convert a fourth down, and they came up short. They'll take over at the 49. The Nittany Lions line up with a single set back to you. Fakes to the back. He throws. They'll bring him down for a loss on the play. That'll be a loss of one. They line up at the 48. Second down and 11 yards to the sticks. Penn State sets up in the eye. A little juke. Tackle made at midfield. The running back gets two on the carry. Third and nine. Ball on the 50. Collins lines up with four wideouts. Collins drops back to pass. Across the middle. Incomplete pass. Hello, sweetheart. 
Now that's how to break up a pass. That one had completion written all over it. But the young man on defense delivered a good enough hit to knock the ball loose. He sure did. There was no way he was going to let that receiver catch that one. Hopkins will be the return man. He punts it. This one's going to be down in the end zone for a touchback. What do you guys think this offense has to do to get their team back in this game? I think the important thing here is to get the ball in field goal range so that the kicker can come in and win the game. I agree 100% with you, Kirk. Move the ball downfield, put the ball in the middle of the field, and let the kicker do the rest of the work. Man, we make it sound pretty easy up here, Coach. This defense looks fired up. Tackle at the 25. That'll be a gain of five. Congratulations to our players of the game. Both of these young men should hold their heads up high today. They line up in a double tight set. Watson set to go to the air, and it falls incomplete. He should have had that one, guys. Well, that's a lack of concentration, don't you think, Coach? Oh, you bet it is, and he'll be reminded of that on the sideline for sure. It's third down and five to go. Ball on the 25-yard line. The Tiger line up with two tight ends. Watson drops to throw. They tried to fool him by running the same play again. Fooled no one there, Brad. So they're going to go for it here. Clemson comes out with two tight ends. Looks to pass. Another catch. Across midfield. At the 40. At the 30. To the 20. To the 10. And it's a whole new ball game. Great play, and they should be celebrating. They did just what they had to do. Now they have the lead. And it's also a big touchdown because it takes the kicker out of the ball game. A field goal won't cut it anymore. And they're looking to get two points here. They come out with three wide receivers. Fires. Incomplete. Clemson yet set to kick this one away. Taylor and Royster deep to return. Short kick. He didn't get a hold of that one. Taylor fields it at the 11. Guys, what do you think about this situation? This is obviously a big possession. They have to get the ball in the end zone right here. And this is their last opportunity, Kirk. If they don't score here, then they can call it a night. It's first and 10. Royster is the deep back as they line up in the eye. He looks to throw on first down. His receiver has it, and he's taken down at the 44-yard line. They pick up solid yardage there. Yeah, nice little pitch and catch there. The wideout was able to find a little open space in the defense, and the quarterback was able to get him the ball for a good pickup. First and 10, ball on the 44-yard line. Drops back to pass. He throws it. It's deflected, and it's incomplete. Robinson was the intended receiver on the play. That'll bring up second down. From their own 44-yard line. Second down. The Nittany Lions line up with a single set backfield. Throws it out there. Patrick gets in the backfield for a loss. Penn State will call a timeout, and they'll have two remaining. Third down, 15 to go. Ball on their own 39. Collin comes to the line with three wide. Steps up in the pocket. He guns it. His receiver has it. A flag came out after the ball was thrown. Let's see what this is. First of the foul. Nothing to pass it. Automatic. First down. The officials march off 15 yards against the defense. And when the quarterback releases the football, you can't do that kind of stuff. It's bad for your team, and it makes you look like a fool. First down. Collins with three wide receivers. Collins steps back to pass. Somehow gets the ball away, and this one falls incomplete. Great pressure on the quarterback forced that incompletion. Boy, they really pounded him on that throw. They sure did, but somehow he got rid of the football. Second down and 10 to go. Ball on the 30-yard line. 
He drops back. Rolls to the right. Looking. Rifles it over the middle. And he's tackled right away. Penn State will have one timeout remaining. trip down here was a success. Let's see if this one will result in another touchdown. And he's hit immediately. Penn State will take their final timeout. And this play is number eight on the drive. The offense lines up with three wide receivers. Throwing left. Someone got a hand on. I'm Brad Nessler, joined in the booth by Lee Corso and Kirk Herbstreet. No complaints about the weather tonight as we see nothing but stars in this contest between the Pittsburgh Panthers and the USC Trojans. Well, folks, we're excited to bring you what appears to be another great gridiron matchup. And here come the Trojans. I think this thing's a toss-up. We've got two teams today that can really get it done on both sides of the ball. USC has an impressive looking young man at wideout. Watch for them to go to him early and often in this one. He's the big play man in this offense, so look for him to step up and be the difference. It's that time. How about it? I'm going with the Panthers. Got the ball set up, and we're ready to get this thing started. Kicks off. Lewis takes it to 25. Now let's see what kind of success this offense can have as they come out onto the field for the first time today. Well, if you haven't heard about him before, then now is the time to know this cornerback's name. He's a great player, and he'll be asked to shut down the opposing team's number one receiver. He has his hands full today, though. He'll be covering a very good receiver. Kirk, it doesn't matter. This kid is fast, he's smart, and he loves to play the game. I don't see the offense going his way. We'll keep an eye on this matchup, that's for sure. It's second down. They're in the eye. Lewis on a pitch out. And they'll bring him down behind the line. Great pursuit by the defense to stop the outside run. Yeah, the halfback was trying to get to the corner, but he had no luck at all there. From their own 37-yard line, third and 11 here. The Panther go with the eye formation. He's looking to pass. Complete. He's taken down at the 46-yard line. Wow, a long game, but still not enough for the first. Well, the offense hurt themselves by digging themselves into a hole on first and second down, so the defense didn't really have to put too much thought in how to defend on that third down. Here comes the punter, looking to boot this one away. Swan is back deep to return. Hangs it up high. Swan takes it to the 16. The offense heads out onto the field for the first time. And with their defense forcing the punt, it allows them to have a shot at getting the first points on the board. They'll get the ball here at the 16. The Trojans come out in the ace formation, flips it, catches it. He's tackled at the 24. A flag came out after the ball was thrown. Let's see what this is. So the offense will move a little bit closer with that penalty. First down, 10 to go. Ball on the 39-yard line. Simpson is the single setback. On play action. Throws, and he pulls it down. There's a flag on the field, and I think I have a good feeling of what this might be. 
Sound of the offense going in reverse. It's first and a mile. Ball on their own 29. Single set backfield. They'll throw on first down. And he's hammered as he lets it go. I think the pressure forced that miscue, guys. Yeah, good job here by the defense. If you let this quarterback set and throw, he'll kill you all game. But they got excellent pressure on that play. Second and, Second and long. Ball, ball on the 29. Number 14 lines up with four wideouts. And they couldn't hook up on that one. You got to be careful throwing in the coverage like that. Well, Coach, I don't think it was a poor decision. It was just a great reaction by the man in coverage. That'll bring up third down. Third and From their own 29-yard line. Third down. USC comes to the line, only one man in the backfield. Number 14 slings it. Interception off the deflection. He tried to force that one in there. Yep. And the safety made him pay for it. We've got a first and 10. Ball on the 49-yard line. The Panthers line up in an eye formation. They hand it off. And down he goes at the 49-yard line. A yard, maybe two on the... Second and eight coming up here. Ball on the 49. Hayward is the deep back as they line up in the eye. Hayward gets another carry. Brought down at the 47-yard line. Two-yard pickup. Third down, six to go. Ball on the 47. One man backfield. Jed's one tackler. Falling back as he throws. Caught. Smith brings him down at the 29-yard line. Hi, everybody. Brad Nessler here with Lee Corso and Kirk Herbstreit bringing you today's exciting matchup. The players will have to battle stifling heat as well as each other in today's game between the Texas Tech Red Raiders and the Auburn Tigers. Well, folks, we're excited to bring you what appears to be another great gridiron matchup. And here come the Tigers. The Tigers are favored to win this game, but I think anything can happen today. Kirk, your thoughts. Auburn comes into this one with a good passing attack, and they have a difference maker lining up at wide receiver. In fact, Lee, I think he's one of the best receivers in all of college football. I like it, Kirk. That's an excellent pick. Auburn's going to win this one. is ready to open this one up as they line up for the opening kick. He kicks it off. Crabtree fields it at the nine. Now we'll get to see how this quarterback can do today as he comes out onto the field for the first time. The player I'm going to be watching today is this defensive end who is arguably the most exciting player, not just on defense, but on the whole team. After watching this guy play, I can definitely say I've jumped on his bandwagon. He's one of the hardest ends to stop from getting into the backfield. And I don't think today's going to be much different. Yeah, I bet that this tackle hasn't slept too well all week, knowing he's going against this great defensive end. I expect a good game from this defensive end, so let's see how he does. Texas Tech comes to the line with three wide. Dumps it. Catches it. He's knocked out of bounds at the 36. That play fake good for five yards. It's third and inches. Ball on the 36-yard line. 
Four wide receivers in the formation. Option left. They bring him down in the backfield. The quarterback tried to do a little too much by himself. Hey, maybe next time he'll get it out to the back so he can do something with it. Texas Tech lining up the front. Number 27 awaits the snap. Number 27 punts it away. And this is just a beauty. Great kick. Davis fields it at the 24. Now let's see what kind of success this offense can have as they come out onto the field for the first time today. From their own 27-yard line. First down. Newton has four receivers lined up here. He throws. They can't connect. Incomplete. And that was a good defensive play. Yeah, guys, this is because he's in great position to make the play. That'll bring up second down. Second they line up at the 27. The 27 it's second down. The Tigers come out showing three wide. He steps up, and he's hit as he throws. How about that pass, fellas? Well, Brad, the defense was coming with the blitz, and that opened some room for these guys to get open. Yeah, and if you're coming with the blitz, you better get to this quarterback. Otherwise, he'll make you pay. First down. Newton is back in the gun. Newton to the air on first down. And it falls incomplete. He caught it, but failed to get that one necessary foot in. That's an outstanding catch, and he just missed making it. From their own 47-yard line. Second down and 10 to go. Newton lines up in the shotgun. Newton will hand it off. And down he goes at the 48-yard line. Maybe a yard on the run by the tailback. It's third down and nine to go. Ball right around midfield. They come out with four wide out. Newton drops back to pass. Complete. Well, he caught it, but it's almost no yards gain, and now it's fourth down. Give props to the D here for coming up with a big stop on third down. So it's fourth down, and the offense is still on the field. Drops back to pass. He's in trouble. Newton goes down with a sack. They hold on fourth down. Now that's how you get a team motivated. I wouldn't be surprised to see their offense take the field with an explosive power. Number 83, the return man. He gets it off. Number 83, fields it for 29. It's a little late in the game to be punting with a two-possession deficit, don't you think, Coach? I think so, but this coach has a lot of faith in his defense. The problem is that he needs his offense to step up and put points on the board. And they can't do that when they're catching wind on the bench. Four wide receivers in the formation. Duke moves. Tackle at the 34. Number 25 comes away with two yards on the carry. That'll bring up second down. From their own 34-yard line, it's second and eight. They line up in the shotgun. Feeds it to the back. It's on the ground. Harrison brings him down at the 34-yard line. The offense is lucky to retain possession after that fumble. The coach can't be happy with the way the running back is carrying the football. We've got third and eight. Ball on their own 34. Harrell has five receivers lined up here. Steps up in the pocket. He throws left. And it's incomplete. Good job of holding them by the defense. And now the offense will have to punt. The Red Raiders are lining up to punt it away. Number 27 is waiting for the snap. They get this one off, and it's a beauty. Davis 
Fields it at the 22. What do you expect from this offense at this point, fellas? I think this one is just too far out of reach. They need to score here, then recover an onside kick and score again. Although this game isn't over yet, I just don't think they can accomplish that feat with this much time left in the game. Auburn comes out with five receivers. Steps up. He fires this one. Complete. What a catch. Gilbert with a takedown at the 38. I'll tell you, this receiver showed really good hands on that play. This kid is always calling for the ball, and if he keeps making plays like that, he'll continue to get the ball. Congratulations to our players of the game. These guys were playing on a very high level today. The ball is tipped. Excellent job of getting a hand in there to break up the pass. It was, Coach. That one had reception written all over it, but the defender stepped up and made the play. That'll bring up second down. So it's second and 10. Ball on the 38-yard line. Auburn comes to the line with three wide. He steps up. He's looking for his man. Johnson with the tackle at the 43-yard line. How about that play? That's a good pickup there. He just dropped back and delivered a nice throw. It's third down. They'll work from the shotgun. He steps up. He lets it fly. Great coverage, and it's intercepted. He spins. Brought down at the 36. And he probably should never have thrown that ball. When your receivers are covered like that, sometimes as a quarterback, it's better to just take the sack than take your chances with a throw. Corso and Kirk Herbstreit bringing you today's exciting matchup. It's the most miserable weather you could have for a football game. Cold and rainy for the Michigan State Spartans and the Ohio Bobcats. Well, we hope you're as excited as we are for this one. And here come the Bobcats. The Bobcats are going to have a rough time on the field in this game. I want to hear what Kirk Herbstreit thinks. Michigan State has one of the best linebackers in the nation, and he can do it all. Whether it's stuffing the run or playing the pass and coverage, he'll be all over the place today and lead his team to victory, Coach. Nice pick, Coach. I got Michigan State winning the... It's first and ten, and this is the ninth play of the current drive. The Spartans line up with five receivers. Throws to the middle. Incomplete pass. Number 87 was the intended receiver on the play. Everybody, Brad Nessler here, and with me as always, Kirk Herbstreit and Lee Corso. Tonight, we'll see how this freezing weather affects the Arkansas Razorbacks and the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Well, folks, we're excited to bring you what appears to be another great gridiron matchup. And here come the Cornhuskers. The Razorbacks haven't been buying the underdog type, which should make for a great game today. Kirk, Nebraska, look. First it's first ten. and 10. They line up at the 50. One man backfield, McFadden on the give. Tackle made at the 50-yard line. Not much for the runner as he gets back to the line of scrimmage. Second and 10. 
McFadden is the single setback. Catches it. There's a very impressive open field tackle. Looks like someone was called for holding. Holding. Only offense. Still second So instead of moving forward, they'll move a few yards back. Boy, I hate to see guys making dumb penalties like that. We've got a second and long. The Razorbacks line up with five receivers. Drop back to pass. And he's hammered as he lets it go. And he gets pepper. The quarterback just lasered that one down the field, coach. Yeah, and the defender had no shot at breaking that pass up. We've got third and 12. Ball on the 48-yard line. He drops back. Number 15, unload. Brought down in the open field. This is a simple case of finding the hole in the zone. The quarterback did a good job of recognizing the coverage and then found his man. Yep, give the receiver some credit, too. He got open, then made a nice catch for the first down. There you have it, folks. They really earned it out there today. McFadden alone in the backfield. They'll throw on first down. Oh, great catch. Nice little pitch and catch with a wideout. The quarterback and receiver spend a lot of time together. The coaches say they stay after practice just working on their timing, and right there it paid off. McFadden alone back. Green pass. Britton tackles him for a loss on the play. Taken back three yards. Second down, 13 yards to go. This is the 12th play of this drive. The Razorbacks come out in a shotgun. He drops back. Number 15 passes, and it's caught, and he's hit immediately. A pickup of four on the play. play of the drive coming up. Drops back to pass. That's incomplete. The pressure may have forced the incompletion there. That defense was about to plant him into the ground. He's lucky he even got that ball off. Fourth down. They'll line up the kicking team. This one is about 32 yards away. He gets it up, and he got it. And there was contact after the kick. What are they going to call here? Running into the kicker on the defense. The is the call. Talk about a clutch kick, guys. You know, I give kickers a lot of grief, but you have to have nerves of steel to make a kick like that. My heart is pounding at 200 beats per minute right now, Kirk. <laughs> wow. And it's off. Number 23 takes it at the 8. At the 30. Broke away from one. The run game was a big factor in this offense's last drive when they got down the field for a touchdown. The offense will start at the 34-yard line. Green is the single setback. Rolls right across the middle. Catches it. They'll bring him down at the 47. The offense calls a timeout, and that was their first timeout. First and 10. Ball in their own 47. Frazier on first down. Throws it out there. Into coverage, and the defense has it. That interception could change the whole face of this game. One thing about this interception, it couldn't have come at a better time for this football team. Now all they need to do is get some points on the board. Well, Arkansas will probably run out the clock and we'll go to overtime. This is a very important matchup here. Nine seconds left. Let's see what Millette does. Millette will flip it to McFadden. McFadden on the left side. McFadden, oh, he's got the corner. Here comes McKinney. Hey, it's gone. It's gone. Just a run down to 
and to just send it over time. I am just as stunned as you. Unbelievable. How the hell did that happen? Jeez, this is just too good to be true. What a way. A 70 yard run to end the game. Yikes. At the 43. Third down. Number seven has four receivers lined up here. Steps up. Number seven passes. Got it to him on the run. They convert on third and long, guys. With the offense coming through in a big way that time, how about the timing on that route, coach? Yeah, Kirk, the quarterback was able to throw to a spot, and the receiver was there to catch it for a first and ten. Nice play. The Cougs line up in a goal line formation. A couple, maybe three yards. Second and seven coming up here. Ball on the 38-yard line. Houston lines up in a goal line set. They'll go with a fullback. The fullback gains about four yards there. The offense faces another third down as they line it up. Houston lines up for the shotgun set. They'll run for the first on third and short. Two-yard loss. Houston will take their first time out of the half. They'll line it up for a very long field goal attempt. This one from 53 yards out. It has the distance. And this one doesn't have the distance. Well, that's a tough break for these guys who are looking to put three points up on the board. It's first down. They line up in the shotgun. George drops back to pass. He fires right side. He just missed his receiver there. He tried to fire it in there, but the receiver just couldn't catch up to it. Second, Second and ten. ten. Ball on the 36. Yeah. Illinois comes out in the shotgun. Waits till the last moment. But hold on, we got a penalty on the play. Let's check it out. Hold it. On the offense. The penalty is declined. Third down. From their own 36-yard line, we've got third and ten. Illinois comes to the line with three wide. Looks, throws this one out to the left. The defender had his hands on it, but it's incomplete. Not on target at all this drive, guys. It's fourth down, and the offense is getting set to go for it. From the gun, drops back to pass. Feeling the pressure. Not much of a chance on that one. Well, they had to go for it. 